Now let's talk lightning. When thunder roars, go indoors. If you can hear thunder, you're close enough to the storm to be struck by lightning. When it comes to Arizona's monsoon, lightning is the most unpredictable weather hazard. Out of all the national parks in the country, the one that sees the most lightning is right in our backyard. It's the Grand Canyon. According to the National Lightning Detection Network, lightning can strike 15,000 times per year. So yes, lightning can hit the same place twice. Most of the lightning strikes hit the highest point, which are the rims. And the highest frequency of strikes is during the monsoon season. Here's Caribe and Crystal with a surprising fact about lightning. About 75% of Arizona's electrical storms erupt in July and August. Most of those strike between noon and early evening. And while lightning comes and goes in a flash, it can leave behind buried treasure. Come on, we're hunting lightning fossils. This is a lightning strike, fulgurite, and this is the way it dispenses its energy and it turns right into a shockwave pressure plate. Just think, lightning is a blink and you miss it kind of moment, but when it strikes sand, it can last an eternity. Here is one down in the washout. Terry, how do you know where to go to look for these fulgurites? By walking all over out here. More than 20 years hunting for fulgurites, you must know this place like the back of your hand. Yeah, but it goes for miles. You can get lost out here. Even though lightning strikes the earth about 8 million times a day, fulgurites are rare. And you can walk for days and never see anything. Unless you're a master hunter like you. You have an experienced eagle eye and a bit of luck, don't you? Here's another one. The next best thing to holding a bolt in your hand. <laughs> you get the lightning with uh, all that energy, and it just melts the sand immediately into a beautiful formation like that. And then just like that hardens with the snap of a finger. There's a couple more now right up the hill. Right there's one. What makes this part of the desert so great for finding them? Well, of all the erosion, some of these are real old. How could you tell? The different colors, the different shape, the, the hardness of them. Something attracts a lot of the lightning here a long time ago. I think it's from the real fine sand, the silt down below. The moisture must stay here. And it looks like there's one here. Oh wow, this, is, this goes deep. You can't be afraid to get dirty. With this piece so far, we've got about two to three foot. How deep can these fulgurites go into the ground? We have got some that's 18 foot long easily. It basically maps the channel. We have found some fulgurites that are 18 inch diameter. Now the hole in the middle is big enough to put your arm through. I mean, you have to get in there sometimes with a shovel and like, but you have to be delicate at the same time. It's like tricky business. You never know what you're gonna get. Wow, is that a beauty. Got little stones attached to it, melted to it as we're going down. Oh, it's heavy. The white is Le Chandelierite, discovered by Mr. Le Chandelier. It's a more pure melted glass. When you find something like this, do you feel like you've hit the jackpot? It's just like it was meant to be. Yeah, the first couple of thrilled, but then after that, wanted to learn, get more knowledge and learn more about it and look more and find more and pass my knowledge on to other people. So the next time you're out hiking, look around. You might just find a monsoon masterpiece.